Yo dudes, the Empire's pretty chill. Maybe you could like join it or something. One, Luke Immerse Prime here, so it's time for the next episode of my series of Old is Better Than New. And in today's video, I thought I'd do a topic where I'm going to be talking about something related to my favourite superhero of all time, who, if you guys were not aware, is Spider-Man. And this is for a particular form of media the character appears in, why I personally think that Old is Better Than the New when it comes to a character. And because while I think he does have lots of strong films and also strong video games, I would unfortunately say that one form of media he's in has got weaker and probably even worse over the years. And that, for me, what I think all better than you is none other than Spider-Man television shows. So, now when it comes, of course, to what the old Spider-Man shows mean to me then. So, over my, my whole life, I have seen lots of shows with Spider-Man as the main character. I think the first one that I saw was the 1967 animated series, which you guys will probably remember best for its iconic theme song. And it's definitely, of course, still iconic to this day, absolutely. Just a timeless theme song in every way. Yeah, I, I really appreciate the 1967 show a lot for that. And it's definitely a, a great show as well. Then, I also as well remember watching the show from 1994, which is part of the animated series. Definitely, in my opinion, a really great show. I mean, I personally think that in the 90s, Marvel and DC had, had really great animated series. And... This show is definitely a massive example of that, because I think the show was absolutely amazing, in my opinion. And I remember watching when I was a kid, I was just drawn into the Marvel Universe of Spider-Man and his enemies from this show. It was just incredible, really. Like, it was this show alongside Tom Maguire's films that got me re really into the Spider-Man franchise a lot when I was a kid. And I'm really happy about that. Then after that, in 1999, the year I was born, we got, of course, the show Spider-Man Unlimited, which I think is also good, too, as well. I mean, while it may not be as good in my opinion as a 994 show, it's probably Unlimited a great show. I think it was definitely really, really good to watch, in my opinion. Then, also as well, I've already mentioned Sam Raimi's Spider-Man films with Tobey Maguire, because we also got a show in 2003 which actually tied into the, to, the Raimi films in continuity, which was part of the new animated series, which I've also seen some episodes of, and I love how it's even as well connected to, to a Daredevil 2003 film by featuring Mark, Michael Clark Duncan and Rising Towards Kingpin, so... It's making me wonder, do those franchises share a universe? Hmm, I wonder. But yeah, it was definitely really awesome to have him about. Yeah, and rest in peace to the absolute legend, Mr. Michael Clark Duncan. Rest in peace to him. And then in 2008, we got what is probably the number one spot on show that I remember the most of, of my childhood. And it's definitely, in my opinion, one of the best animated shows of all time, which is... The Spectacular Spider-Man. And I think it's been, for itself has been a spectacular show, absolutely. And it was also this show that made Josh Keaton my favourite voice actor for Spider-Man of all time. And he's definitely, in my opinion, an absolutely perfect casting. It's also incredible how he's in his 40s and he still sounds so young to this day when it comes to playing youthful characters. He's got such a great talent, Josh Keaton has. And I say that because of, obviously last year he did also have a cameo as his spectacular Spider-Man in, in Across the spider which I thought was really awesome. I definitely did love that. And yeah, Josh King gave absolutely amazing performance in this show. And this show for me is definitely a massive example of a show which is much better than what we get today, in my opinion. Especially when you, when you compare it to what we get in today when it comes to Spider-Man, that is. So, yeah, Spider-Man is absolutely phenomenal, in my opinion. And why it didn't get another series is beyond me. I think it was a massive mistake to end that series. And I'm hoping, because of, of his cameo in, in Cross spider we're going to get another series. Just please, give me another season of the show already, please. Like, the fact that the, the fan base is still active, including from me and many of my friends, it's still there. It's proof that they should continue the franchise. Just please bring it back. Sadly, however, when it comes to this great show, unfortunately, that, to me, is the last of the great Spider-Man shows. Because after this, I feel the franchise, when it comes to Spider-Man TV shows, has really gone downhill. Because after the show sadly ended... In 2012, four years after Spider-Man was first released, we got a show which is probably an example of a show which I actually hate, but that people do like, and that is the show Ultimate Spider-Man. Now, when it comes to this show, I did watch the first episode of the show, and 
compared to the Atlas Pardon, what I was hooked from the very beginning, and I watched the entire film when I was a kid, and I absolutely loved it, I absolutely hated the first episode of Ultimate Spider-Man. I could not stand it whatsoever. It was nowhere near as iconic, or as memorable, or as awesome as the older Spider-Man shows. Like, I don't know what happened at all. And the sad thing as well is, because this was a show that was airing, the unfortunately, yeah, as well, we casted Josh Keaton and Darren Norris with, with, with a cast of Ultimate Spider-Man for appearances in my film all show of all time, Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Although I did appreciate J.K. Simmons being in this show as J. John Jameson, because he's, in my opinion, the best J. John Jameson of all time, and in my opinion, no one could play more better than him. So I did appreciate they got him in this, and he, of course, redubbed Darren Norris' lines in, a, in of course, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, didn't he, of course, due to, of course, this show taking over when it comes to Spider-Man. But this show, in my opinion, was just so bad. And also, when it comes as well to Drake Bell, I am personally not a fan of Drake Bell as Spider-Man. He's nowhere near as, as cool as Josh Keaton is, in my opinion. He's, he's definitely a massive downgrade. Not to mention, I have no respect for him in, in real life, obviously. Screw Drake Bell all the way. Just screw him. He's a terrible person. And the show is just, in my opinion, really bad. But sadly, however, this was not the worst to come for Spider-Man's shows. Because unfortunately, in 2017, after all the Spider-Man ended, and you know what, good riddance to it, because that show, in my opinion, sucks. And not to mention, it's also part of a shared universe with, as well, other shows in, in the 2010s decade being Avengers Assemble and also Guardians of the Galaxy show. And I'm not a fan of those shows either. I personally think Avengers Assemble was only made just to cash in on the, on the release of the first Avengers MCU movie, and that's it. No other reason whatsoever other, other than that, which is, in my opinion, dumb. We should just continue to as Mighty Heroes. But after Ultra Spider-Man finished, we then got a show in 2017, which in my opinion is absolute garbage. And that's the show which is which is simply called Spider-Man. And this show, in my opinion, absolutely sucks. Now, I want to set a record straight because I have not seen a full episode of a series and I quite frankly don't want to. But I've unfortunately seen clips of it to get clips for my of audio for my voice comparisons I've made on my channel. And from what I've seen, I am very appalled at what the franchise of on Shores has become. Because, in my opinion, the stories are trash, and the animation is, is absolute garbage. Like, I cannot believe it. The Zagler Spider-Man is from 2008, and it has miles better animation than this 2017 show. The same goes applies to a 994 show, and Unlimited as well. Even 967 shows got way better animation than 2017 show, and that's, you know, just really shocking in my opinion, just very appalling. And not to mention, the character designs also suck as well. And I am personally not a fan of 90% of, of the voice cast either in the show. Not a fan of them at, at all. Like, they just don't want through the characters, in my opinion, really. So, the show, in my opinion, absolutely sucks. So, all I can say is, screw this show all the way. In terrible, in my opinion. The old spot on shows, in my opinion, are miles better. And hopefully one day I'll see if I can get them on DVD or Blu-ray to re-watch. Because they're part of my childhood, they mean a lot to me. So, hopefully one day I'll, I'll get them to re-watch. Because they're definitely great, it's in my opinion. Definitely way better than this garbage that I've just ranted about. So, Screws was bad on and, and 2017 all the way. Because they both suck in my opinion. I'll stick to the great Spider-Man shows. Absolutely. The ones which actually matter. Which are still relevant today. Especially because Spectacular Spider-Man still got a fan base. Which includes me. So, I'll stick to a good stuff when it comes to Spider-Man shows. So, guys, this video in the next episode from All Is Better Than New, I was saying why, in my opinion, Spider-Man TV shows are better in all than the new. So, you know the drill, guys. Be sure to give this video a like. Also, be sure to leave in the comments what you guys think of Spider-Man shows doing All Is Better Than New. Let me think in the comments below. Also, be sure to join Team Plan by pressing subscribe to the future. And, with great power comes great responsibility.